Very well. Now, it is emerging that Kenyans are actually willing to give a bribe to get permanent jobs in the military and in other government institutions. Why is this phenomenon happening? Also, the job market is equally shrinking by the day. What new opportunities are coming up in the market? Today, we dot the I's and cross the T's on all this with my panel of guests in studio today. You're right on time for Business Cafe, your dawn business update. I am Brian Jodotien and we have a lot lined up for you, of course. Abi Agina is also in the Expo 2020 in Dubai. This and so much more. Let's get it off with the fuel prices. Fuel prices will remain unchanged for the period 15th February to 14th March 2022. Of course, this is uh, thanks to the fuel levy that has been instituted by the government. Let me give you the prices now. Super petrol will retail for 129.72 shillings. Diesel at 110 0.60 Kenya shillings and of course kerosene at 103 and uh, 0.54 Kenya shillings. The impact of the petroleum development levy has kept the prices intact with the actual price of super petrol at 144.25, diesel at 133.89 and kerosene at 119.42. That's right. Let's talk about reforms in the SACO and the financial services sector. The SACO Society's regulatory authority, SASRA, has today commenced stakeholder consultations on proposed levy on the deposits of specific non-withdrawable deposit-taking SACOs to fund its expanded functions. These developments come hot on heels on the regulators issuing 185 non-withdrawable deposit taking circles with licenses to operate for the period January 1st 2022 to December 31st 2022 25 which were you are raising money from the deposit taking circles we are moving to 360 and like as I said the framing of these regulations is such that every month there is a circle reaching 100 million and therefore automatically they come to Sasra Two, and I think that answers the question of, uh, you know, and uh, kind of circles is that what we are having is that the new regulations also mean the digital, whether you have 100 million or not, but you want to operate digital, that is virtually, or you want to recruit members from diaspora, from day one, you have to come under us. And that therefore means operationally, you have to build capacity, because that also requires a lot of severance in capacity, both you are visibly online and you're able to collect data that you can actually act on as a regulator, no speculation. Let's take you across borders. And Kenya is this morning hosting a high-level business forum in Dubai, UAE, where President Uhuru Kenyatta is expected to lead a high-powered business delegation to strike various bilateral agreements with the Gulf Council of Countries. KTN's Deputy Economy Editor Abi Agina now joins us with the latest. Well, it is day two of the Dubai Expo here at the United Arab Emirates. And today's focus will be on the business forum where various countries will be making the pitch and Kenya will be taking the center stage when it comes to engaging with the Gulf countries from Qatar, Bahrain, UAE, among others, where Kenya is looking to position itself as the main gateway into Africa. We spoke to some of the business leaders and this is what they had to say. And as we speak right now, we've had about 13 million uh, people have visited Dubai uh, at the moment at the expo. So this offers an opportunity for us to showcase our innovations, our investment opportunities, and also our tourism destinations. For instance, we know that Kenya has key export products, what we call iconic products. Uh, that is tea, coffee, uh, cut flowers, and then we're talking about nuts. But apart from that, Kenya is also has prowess within the manufacturing sector, especially uh, within the regional market, that is uh, Comesa and ESC. We export most of our products there. This is what we are showcasing, that uh, we need to expand the modalities, even go beyond Comesa and ESC, especially within the SCFTA. So this expo gives Kenya an opportunity to showcase that uh, she sits uh, at a very strategic position as a leader within the ESC and also sub-Saharan region, but also as a point whereby global companies can find an entry point into Africa. 
Right. So this is what we are showcasing uh, within the Expo 2020 Dubai. Fantastic. Uh, just take, take us through what should, we should expect today. I know there's a GCC meeting and uh, which areas of uh, cooperation and uh, trade are we looking to emphasize? Uh, the role of uh, government uh, in any particular, uh, I would say, sector is to facilitate, facilitate conversations uh, between uh, uh, private sector is to provide the overarching, I would say, uh, uh, trigger. Like now, what we're doing is that uh, we appreciate that we're at Expo 2020 Dubai, but we're, not, we're just looking beyond the Expo. We know that uh, Kenya is yet to fully harness uh, the potential of the Gulf uh, uh, Countries Council. So that uh, right now we have about, we're only able to take up about 0.1% of what the entire uh, Gulf region uh, imports. But yet these are products that Kenya has potential in. That is a, a, a products dealing with food, because we know that this region is a net, net importer of food. But All right, and of course, we'll be giving you so much more on that bilateral meeting that will be held later on today at uh, the Expo 2020 being hosted in Dubai, uh, the United Arab Emirates. Of course, Abiy Agina is there, will be following us, uh, furnishing us with the details of that bilateral meeting. Let's now have the discussion that we promised earlier on. And of course, we want to talk about the job market in Kenya. It's the same story that we've given prominence on our premier financial standard, which is a premier um, editorial that we produce on every Tuesday, talking about various economic and, of course, corporate news that is coming out. Uh, that corporate news that concerns you really. Want to and and the spread right there by Dominic Omondi is: Are you looking for a job? You can't go wrong with these sectors. We want to look at which sectors those are. We want to also look at uh, sectors that are shrinking and why this phenomenon is happening. But first off, let's give you a bit of perspective on this with numbers, shall we? So. This is how the job market in Kenya is looking like. So the number of employees who are working permanently, both directly employed and of course indirectly, are 2.7 million, well over 2.7 million Kenyans have permanent jobs. And these are people who are employed either, either directly or indirectly. Of course, the biggest chunk of these employers are the government. And we'll be looking at that phenomenon. We'll be asking my, one of my guests here today if that is the right phenomenon to have in a country like this. And of course, the majority of the jobs that are being churned out today are the teaching jobs, accounting for about 178,000. Let's give you more perspective on that. So how much can you expect to earn if you work for various organizations? You can be guaranteed to get 100,000 shillings or more if you work for international organizations. You're talking about the UN, the Amnesty International, and of course, so many others that have made inroads into the Kenyan market. Banks, insurance, and companies were seven out of 10 workers and 50,000 shillings or more give you more numbers on this. Um, of course, those are, this data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. The period under, under review was 2012 to 2022. Now, agriculture lost about 19,000 uh, workers in the period under review. Then in mining, no employees and above 100,000 Kenya shillings on a monthly basis will be looking at why housekeepers equally have never earned above 1,000 US dollars, which if, of course, if you put to perspective now, is about 100,000 Kenya shillings. And the real estate sector, people earn less than 10,000 Kenya shillings. And of course, agriculture and mining, uh, of course, that 3% of them earn below 20,000 Kenya shillings. That right there is the last slide of our data that we prepared for you on this, on the state of employment in the country. My colleague Moike William had, of course, um, an as live talking about what uh, Kenyans are saying about the state of employment in the country. Now joining me for this discussion is Martha Mushiri, who is a HR consultant, and um, Steve Obiro, who is head of policy at the Federation of Kenya Employers. Gentleman, lady, good to have you today on the show. How are you too, bro? Ah, great. So Martha, I'll start with you first. Why are we experiencing this shrink in the job market? Which jobs are losing popularity, if I may, if I may say so? Um, jobs are there. A lot of them are losing popularity. Okay. And we can see that um, starting with the traditional jobs where you could find that uh, you'll have the permanent employment. Mm. Currently, employers are not going the permanent way. Mm. And it's not their wish. It's because of the 
uh, the daily development in the economy, okay. you find that they are afraid of engaging employees on a permanent basis. Mm. Then when the market hit low, they don't know where to take these employees, they cannot retain them anymore, mm. and there are laws to abide by them when they want to uh, terminate these employees. Mm. Hence, that, uh, we see the move from having companies engaging employees on a permanent base mm -hmm. to now come into contract, mm -hmm. either a long-term contract that is uh, up to five years or short-term, one to three years. Amazing. Uh, good. Uh, Obiro, you are in charge of policy at the Federation of Kenya Employers. Is it a good phenomenon that the government is actually the biggest employer in the country? Uh, definitely it's not a good phenomenon because mm -hmm. government is not in the productive sector. It's sure. in the service sector. It's to facilitate definitely. Uh, the regulate. operations of the economy and regulate mm -hmm. and uh, provide policies that enable the, the economies uh, to work. So um, we need more jobs in the private sector, mm -hmm. more decent, good jobs in the mm -hmm. private sector. And the phenomenon we, we are observing today is mm -hmm. not something that has started with COVID. COVID has only accelerated it. As the Federation of Kenya Employers, we talked about this thing starting 2015 when we said, wait a minute, there is something wrong in the economy because mm -hmm. we saw the private sector was shrinking. It was, it was uh, growing at a shrinking rate and then the, uh, the informal uh, sector was um, growing at an increasing rate. And we said this is not a good thing to do. Mm. And so what COVID has done, it has just brought what we already having mm. uh, at the forefront. It has just accelerated it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the, at the structure of our economy, uh, traditionally, we are an agricultural-based economy. Sure. If the, the, from the figures you see, you, you, you've just displayed on the on the screen. If you look at the ten uh, the ten year period, you mm. you already find out that the agriculture sector has shrunk. Uh, Nineteen thousand jobs have been lost. If you compare on how where we should be, mm. and now if you look at that, you should ask yourself: Had we maintained the same trend of growth mm. uh, in, in the agriculture sector, what would we have gained in ten years? Now, from our own analysis as the Federation of Kenya employers. When we did our analysis during the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic period, when we had the restriction and all that, mm -hmm. we found out that the, the companies or the economy was losing 8.3% mm -hmm. of jobs annually. Mm -hmm. And that is not a good thing. That's not a good uh, we, we, need, we need to have more uh, private sector uh, employment, more in the productive sector. We need to see a lot of manufacturing jobs. Mm -hmm. and we need to see a lot of agricultural value addition and uh, processing a lot of those jobs in the economy because that, those jobs are the ones that now can provide a backbone for even in the service sector. If you are, say, a lawyer, you can't operate in an economy where you don't have people in the productive sector. Sure, sure. If you are in the service sector, if you are in the retail uh, business, mm. you want to sell uh, your goods to somebody who has money and mm. there should be an economy sustaining that. Mm. So there's so, that symbiotic relationship between all these industries. Exactly. Mm. The, the, the economy works together and, and you need to have more productive uh, jobs from the productive sector for them to sustain even in the service sector and other, uh, and other areas, <laughs> including the finance. Mm. If you are in the finance the sector, financial, you need, services. Uh, financial services, you need people who come and banking you, mm. people who come and bank to, to, to the banking sector and the uh, bank the money or uh, consume the financial services mm -hmm. uh, must be having a way on, on, on getting the, their incomes. I'm going to come back to you with that question of how to make that happen. We're in an electionary period that has been poised as a very uh, as an economically mm -hmm. as an, econ an economical revolutionary election. Uh, of course it's a transition election. I'm going to come to you uh, on this one on how to make all this possible in our economy. Martha I'm going to ask you, so where are the jobs? Where are the opportunities? Where are the new opportunities? Because we are noticing that there's a shrink in the traditional, in what we have always known as jobs in the country. Where then are the new opportunities? Well, jobs are there, mm. but not as they were there before. Okay. Uh, and currently, if you find that you want to be in the job market, mm. you have, uh, of course, to run with the way technology is running. Mm. You find that uh, we have moved from the traditional way of... Uh, working in the traditional workplace, mm. whereby you find uh, back then uh, employers could have full-time employees. Mm. And currently you find that uh, most of the time you'll have them having employees on a short-term basis. Okay. There are those who be contracted like interns to come and help only when the ba job is bulky. Mm -hmm. And then later on the employer want to remain with employees that they can uh, really be able to um, sustain in mm. the job market. Okay. As my colleague Steve here said, uh, it's a chain. 
the economy is a chain. If, um, if, the, if the manufacturing industries are not there to create jobs, or now the private sector is not there to create jobs, mm -hmm. you'll find that even you in the uh, service uh, environment, when you want to hire a finance person, why are you hiring a finance person when there is no uh, finances to count? Mm -hmm. There are no money to count. Wow. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If you want to be a finance person, you must first of all have work that this person will bring on board for you to do. Mm -hmm. But you find that um, a lot of jobs are moving in the technology, whereby okay. you find even the financial institution are moving into the fintech, mm -hmm. where transactions are done uh, using the mobile at the comfort of your home. They are now more customized. Y yes. Okay. You, I'll give an example like the banking sector. You see, uh, previously the banking halls used to be full. Sure. Currently, when you walk into a banking hall, you'll see about 10 to 15 people. Sure. Where you want to tell me the banks don't have customers? They still do have these customers. There's only a shift. In yes, the, in the there's place a of shift of now the traditional way of doing things to the advanced advancement of the technology, mm. where everything now is coming back to uh, running through te te the technology. technology and as, um, uh, as people who are looking for jobs, we should now be able to uh, now be able to be conversant with the technology that is coming up. Even mm. when the employer has opportunities that can you can feel. Mm. Uh, when you go for the interviews, you don't feel empty or you, you're not suitable for that job. Mm -hmm. You already have the skills to offer to the employer and that will get the job. Steve, allow me to introduce an appendage to this discussion, which is the gig economy that uh, Martha has alluded to. We are seeing more trends into the de technological world. People are finding jobs on the technological platforms. But the question that we are now addressing, and of course we've had the discussion with Martha before, and she said that now the biggest question is how to make the gig economy sustainable. How do we get there from a policy perspective? Uh, of course, uh, the gig economy is an emerging economy. Sure. And um, at the, from policy perspective, we need to ensure that we provide policies, we provide the legal framework mm. to support the operation of the gig economy. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is another thing we need to look at. Mm. Uh, and I want to take an example of where we are developing platforms for marketing of products. Mm. Now, which products are you marketing? Are you developing a platform to market the Kenyan products or you are developing a, a platform to market products from, from, from outside, from, uh, outside mm -hmm. Kenya or mm -hmm. from outside Africa, from China, from uh, uh, the European Union and all that? Okay. We need the, the, that economy to be linked to our, our, our real economy. Mm -hmm. If we are marketing products, and, uh, and, and um, uh, Bran, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, in, in Africa, we have the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement that mm. has been agreed. What is the essence of that is to ensure that Africa is able to trade with Africa. Sure. We are able to move our goods and sell within Africa. Mm. But you can't move your, your goods and, and sell with your products and sell within Africa mm. if you don't have the products. Sure. So we need to be developing our own products. We need mm. to look at where is our manufacturing base? Where do we have these products? Mm. We are agricultural based economy. We need to ensure that there is value addition in our agricultural products and that we are put them to the level where it can com they can compete in the, in, the, in the economy so that when we develop even marketing platforms, then we are developing our uh, we, are, we are marketing our products. We can sell our products anywhere in Africa mm. and even outside Africa. If we do that, then the economy itself will start growing. It will start, there will be a spiral effect. Sure. You will see the, uh, that effect even on the revenues that the government collects. You will see that effect on the other products, uh, other sectors, whether it is a really uh, um, really estate sectors, the construction, uh, and all the sectors that we have, including the, the education. Mm. But if we don't have that growth in the real economy, mm -hmm. we're going to have a challenge. I wish I'd say trickle down or bottom up, but depending on which lenses you wear, really, <laughs> the trickle down or bottom up. But I, love, I like how you are interrelating this, all these factors, all these sectors of the economy. I now want to give each and every one of you two minutes at least to uh, weigh, in, weigh in on this matter. Now, how do we make how do we make the private sector the bigger employer? I'll go with you, Martha, first. What policies do we need in place? What structures do we need to put in place? We have seen things like power reforms. We have seen uh, things like easing up of trade barriers. We have, of course, he alluded to it uh, with, with the conversation about the Africa content of free trade agreement. But then how do we make the private sector the bigger employer in an economy like this, Martha? Uh, for us to, uh, for us or the, for the government to make the private sector the bigger employer, they have to look at uh, what is that bottleneck that is getting hold of the private sector. Sure. What is making it not for it to thrive? Mm. Yeah. So to begin with, uh, let me to be uh, on a 
on a better way say that um, we have seen the way taxes have been brought into the mm. into the market by the government mm. uh, you find that whenever the government wants to bring in re revenue on its end they are going for the taxes mm. so we also have other regulations that have put in place uh, uh, yes they have opened up uh, the market uh, for the free trade but are they supportive into the innovation world you see currently our Kenyan market is uh, mostly compressing of the youth the youth are at a bigger number sure. and uh, they are becoming creative each and every day when these youth become creative and they want to be now in the private sector they start as a micro business then SME mm -hmm. one day these are the bigger people who will come in the economy and now they'll be the bigger private sector sure. how is the government um, supporting that mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. if the government can really support each and every innovation that is coming up mm -hmm. Uh, from any youth that shows they have the cap uh, capacity to mm -hmm. develop anything that is new in the market. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is when uh, we are going, going to, to enlarge more. this market. Ah, great. Powering yes. the startups. Mm. Amazing. Steve, you're 1 minute 30 in how to make the private sector the bigger employer in the country. Um, the first thing, before an investor comes to the country or even uh, a local investor invests, he wants to know uh, that the, 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 the the, the labor, the regulator framework is going to be stable, it's going to be predictable. Okay. Oh, it yeah. is not going to change in between. Mm. The rules of the game are not going to change the in between. The goalposts are not going to be shifted. Yes. Mm. And so we need that stability and mm. predictability in the way we do our, we, we, our, on our regulator framework. Mm. And then the other thing you need is the ease of easing of doing business to simplify it. Mm. Make it easy for somebody to do business in the, in the, in the country. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then uh, you need um, a tax regime that is more facilitative. And I would just pick an example. Mm. We know in Kenya we are gra grappling with how do we raise the revenues to meet the, the different challenges, socioeconomic challenges mm. that we have. Mm. And the thing has been, can we get many people pay the tax? How do you make, get many people pay the tax? We are talking of employment. Mm -hmm. Almost 15 million of Kenyans are in the informal sector employment. Mm -hmm. those, th those people have businesses, have small businesses and everything. Mm -hmm. You need to empower them so that these businesses can move from mm -hmm. being a small uh, uh, from, from informal enterprises to big mm -hmm. established businesses that then can generate wealth for mm -hmm. the country. If we do that, we'll see a lot of, uh, of, of uh, business activity in the, in the, in the, in the, in the private, in sector. private sector. So the government should facilitate business. Okay. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Facilitate business. Let the private sectors drive the economy. Let them uh, be able to produce and, uh, and uh, put in place for, um, uh, policies that will get them access to the different types of markets. Mm -hmm. Let them be competitive. If we are competing with uh, products from Egypt and from other regions, we are in commerce. So sure. we need to remain competitive. Do not put in uh, regulations that are going to stifle mm -hmm. the private sector, that are going to make business to be mm -hmm. very costly. And this piecemeal uh, regulations that are coming in place. For example, you've seen there is a, a change in the NHIF Act. You've seen there is a uh, an introduction of different levies. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a consolidated way where we are looking at the impact wholesomely mm -hmm. so that then we can facilitate the private sector. Steve, we can have this discussion the whole day. I, I, I can see the passion that you have for the, for the private sector, but many thanks. So Thank you so, so much for finding time for us on KT News uh, on Business Cafe today. We'll be speaking to Steve Obiro, who is the head of policy at the Federation of Kenya Employers. And I've been speaking also to Martha Mushiri, who is a private human resource consultant here in Nairobi. I'm Brian Jodotino. Many thanks for your invaluable company. We had suspended the, the conversation about the central bank digital currency to tomorrow. That is the discussion we'll be having tomorrow right here on Business Cafe. Your dawn business update only on KT News. The only name in, in business. Let's meet tomorrow. Same place, same time. Good morning, Africa.